Alright guys, so welcome to quarantine 2020. I think it's really interesting to be honest. Like I, I think it's been kind of cool to see how everybody has responded to it. And to be on the positive side of things, I think there is a lot of good that can actually come out of this if you use it in the right way. Essentially what's happening right now is everyone's being forced to stop and sort of sit alone with themselves. And now is actually a really good time to assess your fitness and your health to see what can be improved. For instance, if you're in the position to lose weight, and actually that's a really important side note to make is you might be thinking about like, what can I do to stay healthy to keep from getting the virus? Or if I do get sick, what can I take to help my body get over it? And honestly, one of the biggest factors that determines how well your body handles being sick is if you're overweight or not. So now is actually a really good time to check yourself on your overall health and whether you're overweight or at a healthy weight. And if you're in the position of needing to lose weight, first of all, good news, it can be done, even at a time like this. And especially at a time like this, it's something that's good to focus on if you need to do it. So the whole reason I made this nutrition triage board for you guys is because the question that everyone is being asked right now, whether you realize it or not, is can you make progress in the midst of imperfect conditions? The interesting thing about that question is it's pretty easy to see that you've got to figure that out right now because everyone's schedules abruptly changed and right now pretty much everybody is in an imperfect situation. None of us are really doing our normal routines, like everyone's affected by it. But the interesting thing is life in general, even routine and normal life, really forces you to ask yourself that question. On a regular basis, even without a quarantine or a pandemic happening, we are required to deal with imperfect conditions. And that could be anything from going on vacation, or maybe there's um, an event with a ton of food, maybe the weekend comes along, maybe you go out to brunch with your friends, or there's like a pizza party that you go to. If you think about it, life is imperfect. So now is actually just an extreme version of imperfect conditions, and it's actually just a really good time to check your fitness and your nutrition strategies to see if they're gonna hold up long term. So the other reason that I did this is because I'm seeing a lot of people finding creative ways to get active and stay active even while we're limited in getting to the gym. Obviously no one's going to the gym right now. So pretty much all the exercise is limited to creative things at home or doing stuff outside. So I'm seeing a lot of people get creative with that. I'm seeing a lot of push-up challenges. Now they're turning into pull-up challenges and all sorts of other things. And that's great, but is that gonna be the only thing you need to do to lose weight? No. And in fact, it's actually not even necessary to lose weight. So what I want to share today that I don't think is being talked about very much right now is the nutritional side of weight loss and specifically fat loss. So these are things that I want to highlight that you're going to need now, especially spending so much time at home and so much time surrounded by food. You're gonna need these three factors present in your nutrition strategy to stay on track and to continue making progress. And also another one of the things that made me wanna speak up about this and share this info with you guys is my three most recent clients that hopped into my program over the past few weeks, over the past three weeks, their weight charts literally look like they took a jump off the cliff. Like their weight is dropping so steadily and so quickly, honestly, that I stepped back and I was like, okay, even with no access to a gym and all of their workouts are being affected, like everyone's essentially working out less, even with that in the picture, they're still losing weight. So this is really valuable stuff for you guys to use and guaranteed if you have these factors in your nutrition strategy, you're gonna make way better progress than if you don't or if you're just relying on exercise to lose weight. First key factor that you've got to have in your nutrition strategy is it's got to be flexible. And again, like I was mentioning earlier, now more than ever, you can't be following a rigid nutritional approach because a lot of us don't even have many options when it comes to the grocery store. Yes, there's still food there, but for example, if you're following a trendy diet or a system that requires you to eat a certain list of foods or a certain way, it's gonna be a really huge pain in the butt to follow that to a T right now. 
So that's what happens a lot of times with well-marketed things, you know, things with capital letters. So anything from keto to Weight Watchers, a lot of times those are built off of rules that you've got to follow, okay? And when you've got something that's built off of rules, that kind of puts you in slavery to that system or to that fad diet. And it can be really hard to follow something like that in a time like this when you have limited options especially when it comes to food. Here's what you wanna do instead. This is what I do with all of my clients. Calories and macros. So specifically, if you put a name to what I teach my clients, it's called flexible dieting, but it's built off of calories and macros. And these are scientific things that are built into our bodies and built into food. Like all foods are made up of calories and macros. And there is a number of calories and macros that you need to aim for to hit every day in order to lose weight. And as scary as that might sound to figure out on your own, if you can have a skilled coach sit down with you and look at, okay, here's how many calories we need to eat, here's what your macros should look like. Macros specifically are relating to carbs, fats, and proteins. It, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. As to where if you're trying to follow random rules and you're trying to follow a system, if you end up in a position like this where you can't follow it anymore, you're left with nothing. You don't have any data, you don't have any numbers to crunch, you don't know how your body works and therefore you're not even in control. But if you're able to learn things like calories and macros, you're able to learn a little bit about them, you're able to learn how our body responds to them, then that gives you more freedom and more control. Because if you're thinking about things like calories and macros, which are numbers, and if you realize that there is going to be a calorie range that will make you lose weight and there's going to be a macro setup that makes you lose weight, then you realize, oh, those are numbers. Food is made up of these things. So there's an endless combination of foods that will allow you to hit that calorie range and hit those macros. And obviously that's going to give you a lot more freedom and a lot more flexibility in how you do that. So if you think about it that way, even though this can kind of sound scary sometimes, if you've got somebody who can explain it to you, it's a lot easier, a lot more freedom, a lot more control, and just a lot more flexible in general, especially in times like these. So that's what I suggest you do. Second thing is you've got to have a positive focus as opposed to a negative or avoidant based strategy. Okay, and what I mean by a positive focus is if you focus on the things that you need to be eating and the things that you should have as regular staples in your diet, naturally focusing on the good stuff will fix the bad stuff. It's understandable for people to try to cut out the bad stuff in order to make progress. And a lot of diets are based off of that principle. Don't eat these foods, cut out your carbs, avoid sugar, don't eat processed foods, stuff like that. It makes sense that people gravitate towards that, but it doesn't work based off of a principle called assigned value. And I know I've mentioned this before, but just in case you missed it, this dates all the way back to the survival days. And what we needed to do is put more to survive. We needed to put more emphasis on things that were scarce, like food, and that allowed us to continue living. The same thing happens when you make things scarce, like if you make processed foods off limits or if you make junk food off limits. That's essentially making those things scarce in your mind. So without even knowing it, your mind is gonna put more value on those things and you will naturally be drawn towards them. And so if you think of it that way, the more you make something off limits, the more likely you are to think about it and want that thing and the more likely you are to eat it. So it really doesn't work to do that. And another example is meditating. Like if you think about it, you, you meditate on the things that you want, right? Like you don't sit there and think about the things that you don't want. And the reason is because, again, you're ultimately drawn towards the things that you think about repeatedly. So thinking about food that you don't want to eat essentially makes you eat that food and it's just not very helpful. Ultimately, instead of focusing on the negative things, if you can focus on eating the positive things, it really fixes two big issues that people have. One is cravings and two is extreme hunger. And another thing about extreme hunger is I've noticed that people who deal with extreme hunger usually deal with a lot of anxiety too. Like when they get hungry, they feel really anxious. And so if you'll focus on these key four things down here, this is the answer right here, you guys. Protein, fiber, water, and sleep. That's the positive focus that you wanna have. So when you focus on those four things, things like cravings and extreme hunger swings are gonna be solved instantly. You won't even feel them anymore. 
and I'm not gonna get into it in on here, but that has to do with the way that our hormones are set up. Feeling those two things is actually, you're noticing different hormone levels be off in your body, and if you'll just focus on keeping these four things in your diet, you won't be feeling those extremes anymore. Third thing is accountability. And this might kind of sound like a no-brainer thing to people, and you also may think that you've got accountability right now, but you might actually not. So let me explain. When you have true accountability, it's going to create mindfulness, and it's also gonna help you enforce the diet that you're trying to follow. Hopefully that's a flexible diet. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of times you can have the idea or the thought of, I'm really gonna do it this time, I've got a nutrition plan, all I need to do is follow it. But without some kind of accountability, you can't really make yourself do it. So that's why accountability is really important. There's a few different ways to do this, okay? First way is you can download a food tracking app. And I think that that's really helpful. Specifically, what I tell my clients to do is, if you can get in the habit of tracking your food before you even eat it, that's gonna help you be a lot more aware of what you're eating. Because especially in a time when you're spending more hours at home, it can be really easy to sort of zone out and snack all day and not even know what you ate at the end of it. So tracking apps can be really helpful. I've got an asterisk next to all three of these. And I'll just tell you that tracking apps, like I would say tracking food is better than not tracking food, but at the same time, passively tracking food, like just tracking what you're eating, isn't half as good as having real calorie and macro goals that you know are effective in losing weight, and then tracking food according to those. All three of these things are great, but all of three of these things are also useless unless you know what calories and macros you should be aiming to hit. Hopefully that makes sense. So tracking apps can be good. Friends can be helpful. Again, they're really, really helpful if they know what you should be aiming to do with your nutrition. And if they don't know what the goal is or what calories and macros you're supposed to be hitting, it's kind of just like a conversation. But I would say talking to a friend about it is better than, than not talking to a friend, either way. Lastly, a skilled coach. So sometimes I find that people just hit walls. You may be at a place to where you've tried this so many times, maybe you've tried the things I've suggested, and it's just not working and you basically have a nutrition migraine now and you're just going, tell me what to do. Someone just tell me what to do. I don't care what it is. I'll do it as long as it works. And sometimes that's when a skilled coach can come in handy because it's really nice sometimes when you're willing to do the work and you just don't know what it is you have to do. It can be really nice for someone who knows what they're doing to just sit down and explain things to you so you're not wondering anymore. Now, that doesn't go for all coaches because some coaches can actually be more hurtful than helpful. And these are the three things that you absolutely have to have in whatever coach you're going to be trusting with your fitness progress and your money. They have to be knowledgeable. And I don't mean knowledgeable in a system like Beachbody or Isogenics, okay? I'm talking about calories and macros and the way that fat loss works. Like, do they understand the science of fat loss? Because if they're gonna be teaching you anything other than that, like the answer is here, you guys. The answer is built into your body already. And if they're not helping you uncover what's already there, then it's not worth learning what they're teaching you because it's not actually gonna help you. It's just making you rely on a system more instead of actually discovering what's already there and what you can be in control of. So knowledgeable in a real sense, you need weekly check-ins, okay? I have heard about online coaches that people feel like are really good, but they'll do things like monthly check-ins, which is not nearly frequently enough for you guys. So when a month goes by and you haven't seen any progress and you haven't had any check-ins, it's not your fault, it's your coach's fault for not being in touch with you, telling you when you need to change and adjust things, okay? Weekly check-ins, besides them reaching out to you weekly, you really need to have 24 access to them because as you know, life can change daily, and if you have something that changes in your life that you need help with, and you've got nutritional questions that you need to ask them, you've gotta have access to them, really whenever you need it. Lastly, they need to be making active adjustments, because I've also heard about people who have coaches that they feel are really good, you know, maybe there's actually a ton of communication. You might even check in with them weekly, and you might even have 24 seven access to them, but unless they are skilled enough to not only check in with you, not only look at your progress pictures, but be able to look at them and then actively change your program if something needs changing, 
then it's useless. Okay, so yes, you need check-ins, but those check-ins have to actually be worth something. And if something needs to change, in other words, if you're not making progress, then things should be adjusted. So those are the tips I have for you guys. Hopefully that's helpful. I tried to keep it really simple. You know, I could go into greater detail on all three of these, but I just wanted to give you guys the core stuff that you should be focused on with nutrition right now. And again, if there's one point that I could make, it's that exercise is great, but I don't want you guys to be stuck there spinning your wheels going, you know, I gotta put all of my fat loss progress on hold while we're in this quarantine, because that's not true, okay? 80% of fat loss comes from nutrition, and again, that's something that I was just reminded of with my three most recent clients. So, just wanna shine a light on all of that for you guys. As always, if you've got other questions, especially in a time like this, with all of our routines being different and everything is having to be adjusted, then please feel free to ask me and I'll be back on here again soon.